Okay, we're here at Boxborough 2010, and we're going to take a look at what's going on out here at the flea market. We'll talk to some different people. Hopefully, we'll get to talk to the people at Flex inside, and there is quite a bit going on in, inside a convention. Uh, there are there was a, is a couple of forums that we're going to take a look at, and it's a beautiful day. Temperature is about uh, 80 degrees, so I hope you enjoy taking a look at Boxborough 2010 here in Boxborough, Massachusetts. See here, we have a little rig there, it puts out only four watts. So I limited myself to four watts and I'm up to 300 and are out there, but it's, I designed one for one commercial company which has got seven or eight elements on it. And believe you me. CQ40, Whiskey One America, Whiskey One America, Whiskey One America. CQ40, CQ40, CQ40. Whiskey One America, Whiskey One America, Whiskey One America. Was that Norway 8, That's India, India? The question is, uh, how does the cost of amateur radio equipment today compare with what it was 50 years ago when, when uh, some of us first got involved? And of course, you get today a lot more for your money. Uh, the equipment has more features, more uh, bands, uh, it's more uh, portable, transportable, uh, a lot more in a small package. So you really uh, uh, very good value compared to uh, the, uh, the, big, uh, the, the big iron that uh, we used to have uh, back in the uh, 60s. The ARRL is doing well right now. Uh, for the past three years we have had increases in membership every year. Uh, this year so far we're uh, steady. Uh, it's been a modest, very modest increase. So uh, we're uh, still doing well financially, uh, but it's the support of the members that makes it all happen. Yeah, the biggest uh, question facing Amateur Radio today, of course, is uh, what are we doing to make sure that Amateur Radio will be around and healthy 20 years from now, when those of us who came in 50 years ago will be uh, 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 departing the scene. And that's, uh, that's a big question. We have to uh, look at uh, how we attract people like us, but uh, in a different world. Uh, it's a different world today than it was then. Uh, different things uh, uh, appeal to people. There's a lot more competition for people's attention. Uh, so uh, getting, making amateur radio relevant to uh, the uh, coming generations is the biggest challenge facing us today. The last uh, big one that I went to, Bert, was the uh, uh, Dayton Hamvention, the first, first time won't be the last and I was really impressed in in these shows up here the the near fest and Boxborough it's unfortunate it's every other year but I guess that's how they can pack in the crowds like they do the people were here bright at six o'clock this morning and looking for bargains and our stock answer is come back at uh, uh, noon tomorrow is when we're we're giving rock bottom prices but again good to see you and I'll be looking for your caustic comments on the net how how did you sell at Dayton? No, I just went as a spectator. Compare Dayton to Nearfest. Um, I'd say that Nearfest is probably about a third of what Dayton is. The, the beauty of Dayton is that if you show up at the Nearfest and you take one space, you can probably get five spaces in Dayton and make it worthwhile for, for not too much more. Buy anything at Dayton? Um, I think what I did was I acquired a, a vast knowledge of what the going prices are, not what you see listed on eBay or Craigslist, and it gave me a good background on what I was looking for. And on my return trip, I did buy a, a Ameritron ADB, uh, which I was looking for at Dayton, but I, I think they must have been gold-plated there because they were a lot more expensive than what, what you could find on the net. Talking about the comparison of prices from here to, to Nearfest, uh, because of the festive environment of the Dayton Hamvention, I think people were always hopeful that that next person's offer will be higher than the last one that he just spoke to and rejected. But there was a lot of stuff there. I spent the three days there that was on the tables for the whole time that, that didn't sell and, and largely due to, due to pricing. My suggestion for people when you shop a, a flea market like this, if you see it, you got to buy it because somebody else will scoop it up if you don't. This year there are no cards with that, that identify people like you have right there. Uh, how come you didn't hand them out this year? I think it was uh, mainly due to uh, a little bit of poor planning on our part. We 
printed the tickets and we couldn't find ticket holders that were large enough to support those tickets. Things are going fabulous. Uh, as you can see the flea market behind me here uh, is almost double last year's uh, two years ago attendance. So we're really happy about that. You can see we expanded the area and uh, inside is cranking. We got talks going on. Uh, couple uh, about 45 minutes we got a talk on pave pause put on by uh, Lieutenant Colonel Sean Smith from uh, from the facility down on Cape Cod so uh, a lot of folks are real interested in that one uh, I hope folks got to see the uh, QRP talks uh, put on by Joe Ricer earlier this morning I heard it was uh, quite interesting and um, he did a good job there's uh, 10 guys on the committee that uh, really worked their butts off to make this happen on the hour name Teresa and Roger Blaze uh, call letters W1ASY from J Main. Pam, what do you hear them talk about? I mostly hear um, people talking about the weather and their their health. Have you ever heard an interesting ham conversation? To be honest, I haven't. <laughs> okay, what's your team? And you passed your license today? today? Yes. What level? Both. Tech and general. And what do you plan to do with your ham license? Maybe go on the air once in a while. <laughs> and what did your dad promise you? If you a had? video iPod, and he still hasn't paid up yet. I'm just a piss-weak little mobile. I got the piss-weak mobile blues. I'm just a piss-weak little mobile. I got the piss-weak mobile blues. Take a ride. She couldn't hear my signal, and I sit right outside. I'm just a sweet little mobile. I got the first week of my blues. Yes, I do. My mobile rig is so yellowy. I can't even blow a fuse. Yeah. 